Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some of the new and more unusual discoveries in regards to various supermassive black holes residing in the center of various galaxies. And specifically focusing on three main discoveries. The explanation for why certain black holes seem to be producing these unusual flares once in a while, which we've even observed from our own galaxy. The explanation for some unusual observations that resemble a supernova that seems to happen every hundred or so days. And more importantly, the explanation for why certain types of active galaxies look a little bit different from a distance than others. And specifically, explaining the details of what happens inside so-called active galactic nuclei. What exactly forms in the middle to make these galaxies look slightly different. And let's actually start with the mystery behind these unusual flares. So, once in a while, different types of supermassive black holes seem to produce the observations you kind of see right here. This one is from the Milky Way Center, this is from Sagittarius A star, the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. And so, despite being called black holes, once in a while these very massive black holes announce their presence through the release of a tremendous amount of energy that's visible in a lot of different frequencies. Something that actually resembles a flickering light that increases in brightness once in a while. And a bit of an epilepsy alert here. But it sort of looks like this. But for a very long time it wasn't really clear what exactly is producing this. It was assumed that maybe it was basically matter falling into the black hole. It was also assumed that maybe it's because of some interaction with the accretion disk. But this new study that, as always, you can find in the description below, might have solved this mystery once and for all by using computer simulations. And not just any computer simulation, the most accurate computer simulation of a black hole center ever created. With over a thousand times more resolution than previously possible. Something that apparently took millions of computing hours. And what they've discovered is that these flares, surprisingly, have very similar cause to the flares around a typical star like our Sun. They seem to be caused by the magnetic reconnections, magnetic line reconnections. With this video right here being a direct demonstration of how a lot of this works. In a nutshell, as the material falls into the black hole, it starts to sort of compress and flatten a lot of the magnetic field lines that are present around the accretion disk. And so as this material that flows into the black hole drags all of these magnetic lines toward the event horizon, all of these magnetic lines start to kind of wrap around the event horizon, creating larger and larger formations that become more and more unstable as more lines fall into the event horizon. But they don't all fall in the same way. Some of them fall in a different direction, some of them fall completely in the opposite direction. All this really depends on the accretion disk and the orientation of the lines initially. And then when suddenly two lines pointing in completely opposite directions end up meeting by accident, they actually break, reconnecting, and release a tremendous amount of matter, plasma matter, that was already present in this particular region. With some of this plasma then falling into the black hole, but other plasma being released into the outskirts of the black hole itself. With the actual process being extremely similar to the process around our sun, just way more powerful. And so just like our sun, it ends up releasing huge amounts of plasma, which move at ridiculously high speeds. But unlike our sun, this material and a lot of the energy here is just so powerful that it actually creates these very powerful flares visible from really far away. And just like our sun, after this happens, the actual black hole then sort of enters the so-called rest period. In other words, the magnetic reconnections cannot be possible for some time. Which finally explains why black holes like the one in the middle of our own galaxy tend to do this on a kind of a schedule. They'll flare up a few times, then they'll stop, then they'll do so again, then they'll stop again. Something that was observed from a lot of different black holes including the iconic M87, but something that was not really explained until now. But then more recently the scientists have also discovered what's happening inside so-called active galactic nuclei. The galaxies that usually have black holes that are extremely active because of the amount of matter they're absorbing and the amount of interaction in the center. And in this case, all of these discoveries came from this somewhat well-known galaxy known as M77. The galaxy you see right here, that's about 47 million light years away from us, and that's also known as the Squid Galaxy. A galaxy that's known for active galactic nucleus that's also defined as the Type II Cipher Galaxy. Cipher galaxies are just a type of an active galaxy that usually produces a lot of different emissions. 
And in this case, by using the observations from the Very Large Telescope, the scientists discovered that there's actually a really thick ring of dust that's hiding the black hole in the center. Something that technically was already known from some of the previous observations. But in this case, they also discovered something else unusual. They discovered that everything around the black hole, including the accretion disk and the astrophysical jets, are actually sort of under an angle toward us. And because of this angle of observation, end up producing slightly different frequencies and slightly different effects from what we would usually see from another active galaxy. Or to rephrase this, this study confirms what's known as the unified model, also known as unified model of active galactic nuclei. And the model is actually really simple to understand. It's something we've discussed in a lot of previous videos without mentioning the actual model. Depending on the angle you're looking at, you're going to be seeing different type of an active galactic nucleus. For example, if you're looking at a distant galaxy and you're seeing what's known as a blazer, it's very likely that you're actually looking almost directly at the jets coming from the central black hole. In other words, you're probably looking at this from maybe this perspective right here. However, if you're looking a little bit to the side, you're going to start seeing something a little bit different. This is known as either a quasar or c for one galaxy. And normally this is from a slightly different angle, somewhere right here, where basically the black hole and the accretion disk create what's known as the torus around the black hole. That's actually the torus that was observed from this galaxy as well. And this torus, formed by the interaction from the accretion disk, ends up hiding a lot of the other emissions and only allows certain type of light to go through and produces just very specific observations that we usually refer to as Cipher galaxies. And if it's just the right angle, it can also be seen as a quasar. And lastly, if you're looking at this from the side, you're going to be seeing Cipher 2 galaxy. In this case, you're basically looking at this laterally. And so based on the observations from M77 galaxy, the main point here is that, well, it's really all about the perspective. That's the idea behind the unified model. It essentially states that all of the active galaxies we're seeing are experiencing exactly the same effects. They're not different in any other way, other than the fact that we're just looking at them from an extremely specific perspective, from a very specific angle. But generally, all of these central black holes and all of these galactic nuclei will always have extremely similar structure on the inside and have extremely similar effects, with the central torus being responsible for most of the differences. It's basically the part that seems to be blocking most of the light coming from the center. And so for that active black hole in the middle of M77, it's that ring-shaped torus that seems to be presenting us with a very certain view that then blocks the actual light that we should be seeing that would generally be resulting in much higher frequencies of light that we sometimes refer to as quasars or blazars. Which to some extent makes future studies a lot easier, because now we can kind of assume that the unified model is correct and all of the central galaxy black holes seem to be doing the same thing. And lastly we have this other observation and confirmation of what sort of was discussed last year. And this time it's about these extremely bright emissions resembling supernova that have been actually observed around other black holes, but in this particular case it seems to be happening around this central black hole every 114 days. With the scientists finally confirming that it seems to be indeed caused by an orbiting star that's sort of actually losing some of its mass to the black hole, with the mass then falling into the black hole producing these supernova-like emissions. In other words, it's the orbiting star being absorbed by the black hole that in some cases might be responsible for extremely powerful emissions that do tend to resemble supernova. As a matter of fact, the original description of this event was an event that resembled a supernova. It was actually called a supernova, but it turned out that it wasn't because of the periodicity. And they think that this is what's kind of happening here. The star here has a very eccentric orbit where it occasionally approaches the black hole really, really close. And because of this, it sort of loses mass that falls into the black hole, producing the emissions. And up until now, as of 2022, this particular event has now been observed 20 different times. And it's always at the same time. It's always basically around 114 days in between these emissions. Which is actually exactly what we talked about in that video from last year that you can find in the description below or somewhere right there that sort of predicted certain dates when this should be occurring as well in order to confirm if this is what's really happening here. And this is, by the way, in the galaxy you see right here, approximately 600 million light years away from us. And it's a pretty interesting event, and it actually once again explains that certain galaxies tend to also absorb stars, and the absorption of these stars will usually produce these effects that can fool us. They can sort of look like supernova. 
And it also means that certain events that we thought were supernova might have actually been these absorption events by different black holes eating their partner stars. And so a pretty interesting discovery and a pretty interesting confirmation. But I guess for now that's sort of all we've learned about supermassive black holes and how they interact with their own environment. And remember, these discoveries are very recent from just the last few years. And this means that in the next 5 to 10 years, we're going to learn so much more. And I'm going to make sure to discuss this on the channel, so make sure to subscribe and maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.